Well, I was going to ask you to stand, but really what I'd like to, for us to do is to give the mothers that are here today uh, an ovation. So let's just clap our hands to the Lord for the gift of our mothers. Amen. Amen. Back when I was a back when I was a little boy, I was attending church out in the country. Lived in town in Orleans, up by the Depot Tavern. If you know where that's at, I hope you don't. Uh, Three thirty-seven East Jefferson Street is where I lived when growing up. The house is vacant now, but it still sits there by the Depot Tavern, which looked like it might be thriving, unfortunately. But uh, across from the Monon Station. Mother's Days, when I were Mother's Day when I was little, uh, my dad always got my mom a flower to wear. Of course he did. Give her a rose every week for years and years. But she wore, if I remember mom wearing a flower on Mother's Day. And I also remember that uh, at church they would recognize the mothers. And I always thought as a boy, you know, I wasn't all that perceptive, I'm sure, but I thought, that, it's awkward for some of the mothers. They would start out uh, easy enough, the, the presenter, and uh, this is from my boyhood memories, at least. Uh, they would start out with, like, the newest mom, that's with the youngest baby, and they would recognize with a flower or something, you know, they would give, have a gift. And then they would do the youngest mom, and that could be awkward, but uh, the youngest mom. And then the mom with the most children. And then I remember they modified it. Started out mom with the most children. But some mothers that had the most children present must have got aggravated, so they did mom with the most children present later. <laughs> and then the presenter really walked a tightrope because it got to that, uh, uh, the oldest mom present. <laughs> And uh, it was the last category is the way I, at least in my recollection. And, and then the oldest mom didn't want to own up. Mom. <laughs> and someone was suggested and then she would say, well, so-and-so over there, she's older than, and you know what happened. It was, it was awkward. I don't think you had to have a lot of perception as an eight to 10 year old to know that that was awkward. And I later ran into that at Crane Village, too, because Crystal Hoagland, uh, she would tell me that Ethel Whitecamp was a little older than she was, uh, but Ethel didn't want anybody to know how old she was, so you couldn't do that at Crane Village. Chris, she didn't care to tell people how old she was, and she really didn't care to tell you how old Ethel was in private. Well, it didn't seem to be a badge of honor any woman wanted, so awkward moment. Well, we have a gift for you today, and uh, I see these roses, and it makes me think of my dad, because every Saturday he went to the flower shop and got my mom a rose, and we just went through cases and cases of vases at my dad's house, right? They were just boxes and boxes of vases, where he had taken her a rose every week, so... Uh, Lord's good to us, really is. My granddaughter made it home from college the first time I've seen her since she got home on Friday. I don't know why I missed her, but somehow I haven't seen her yet till this morning. I wanted to tell a little story on her. It's, it's all makeup. It's not the truth. Uh, unlike my family, they lie to me and don't tell me till afterwards. I'm telling you before. Uh, Carly Marie, uh, she asked her mother, Mandy, my daughter, what's it like to have a perfect daughter? And Mandy answered real quickly, I don't know, you'll have to ask your gram Grandma Christie. <laughs> yeah, you'll get it here in a minute. <laughs> Ephesians 6 2 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. You know, for me and many others, our moms give us the first glimpse of the heart of God. And uh, I appreciate the fact that I had a mom that, that loved me. And she told me so right up until the end that she loved me, and I know she did. I stood at her grave yesterday at her graveside and thought about her a little bit, reminisced a little. 
And uh, thought about the hope we have, the blessed hope we have of being reunited in God's heaven. Uh, but uh, I just thank God for my mom because she really did. She showed me uh, the heart of God throughout my life. And I'm grateful. And I, I hope that you can feel the same about your mom. And it may or may not be true. But, uh, but for me, uh, I have to rise up and bless my mom today. She was an incredible mom. I don't know if you, I, I saw this story. I, I didn't really fact check it, but I, I was impressed by the story. And uh, I hope it's true. Thomas Edison, they said he want, this was attributed to Thomas Edison. He said, I did not have my mother long, but she cast over me an influence which has lasted all my life. She cast over me an influence that's lasted all my life. The good effects of her early training I can never lose. If it had not been for her appreciation and her faith in me, at a critical time in my experience, I would have never likely have become an inventor. I was always a careless boy, and with a mother of a different mental caliber, I should have turned out badly. But her firmness and sweetness and her goodness were potent powers to give me, to keep me, rather, on the right path. My mother was the making of me. The memory of her will always be a blessing to me. Uh, maybe that's part of your story. That's a loving tribute to a blessed mother, isn't it? Well, before I move on to the Mother's Day message, I need to, Christy and I need to thank you for the uh, anniversary dinner and open house last week. Uh, I just, I'll just speak for myself. Uh, I was totally overwhelmed, and uh, I'm very grateful and for thinking all week about all the effort that uh, was put into it, and evidently uh, uh, hours and hours, if not days, of preparation. It's very humbling and uh, awkward to be put in that position for me, but thank you for loving us. Thank you for your kindness. Uh, I deeply appreciate all the love you've shown us. Thank you. You want to say anything else? No? <laughs> no? <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everybody. All the mothers. Mothers, uh, as you know, really matter. Uh, mothers are a significant role of influence uh, and impact on their children. Life changing for the good in most cases. I believe being a mom is a high calling of God. I've always said probably no greater place of ministry than in the home. And I praise God for moms who love God who love God's Word, moms of faith and prayer, moms with a deep uh, abiding trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, moms who model genuine and unstoppable faith and courage. And I should read from the text today, 2 Timothy 3.15, and it says, Paul to Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And then back to the first chapter, and I'll read verses 1 through 5, and I think we should read it in the New Living Translation, if Becky can put that up there for us. First, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Paul, to Timothy, his adopted son in the faith, mentions his mom and his grandmother, from a child that was known the Holy Scriptures, how did he know the Scriptures from, a, from that early onset? It was his mom and his grandmother had particular influence on Timothy. This letter is from Paul, by the will of God, to tell others about the life he has promised through faith in Christ Jesus. I am writing to Timothy, my dear son, spiritually adopted him, May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. 
called a pastoral letter. And if you back, if you want to know what to have, what to pray for your preacher, you can model the Apostle Paul. He was writing this letter to Timothy, who would pastor even pastor. And he said, "May the Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace." Preachers need a lot of that. So let's go to three. Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears. We fill with joy when we are together again. And I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. What a great passage of Scripture. I think moms deserve to be recognized. I believe they are true heroes. Today we celebrate you. We honor you. Uh, you probably don't want to get up and move to give your mom a hug, but I don't think it would be out of place necessarily if she's here and you can. I can't... Uh, you know, for years I would get up early on Mother's Day and drive down, which put me about an hour, over an hour away from here, but I would drive down to see my mom because I wasn't sure I would get to see her the rest of the day. Most of the time she was home, but sometimes maybe in the nursing home, sometimes hospitalized, but I always tried to see her early on Mother's Day. There wasn't any need to drive down this morning. She's not there. She moved. She moved out of town. In fact, she moved off the planet. I can't go for a visit, but I would if I could. And I know you probably would too if your mom's in heaven. But if she's here, you ought to tell her you love her and you ought to give her a hug sometime. Okay? Let's celebrate our mothers again. Let's give them an ovation. Let's give them a standing ovation if you don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. If your mom's in heaven, you can thank God that she's safe and you have the promise of being with her again. Now, Mother's Day can be difficult. I think we've already felt that today. Mother's Day can be a difficult day for people, and that uh, I'm truly sorry. Maybe your mom is really sick and suffering, and that sometimes happens, and that's difficult when your not, mom's not well. Maybe, uh, maybe like me, your mom has passed. And it's just still hard getting used to her absence. And maybe your memories aren't the best. And I've heard that in the last few months. It just broke my heart to hear it, but a confession of just a lot of pain between a mother and child. Maybe you've longed to be a mom and you just haven't been able to be a mom and I'm sorry for your pain and maybe you've lost a child to death and I know that's true in our presence here today, that's true and I know there's been miscarriages and I, I mourn with you over your loss. Uh, maybe your children are uncaring and insensitive and ungrateful and distant I pray that God would comfort your broken heart. And I'll also add, I'll add a postscript, I'll pray that God will convict the hearts of your children. I pray they'll come back to their senses. Today's Mother's Day. And moms, we truly honor you. Thank you for multitasking, for your amazing skill set as you nurture and protect and instruct and love and give for being selfless and sacrificing and loyal. We pray for God's wisdom and strength and peace to rest upon you. For those expecting a baby, I don't guess you'd want to stand, but we rejoice with you. The word might not be out in some cases, but we rejoice with you. For those who have recently given birth, we rejoice. How about all the foster moms? How about that? Praise God for you. And for those who have adopted and for those who are in the process of adopting, we rejoice with you. My heart is so filled with joy for your decision. 
And for those even contemplating, may God lead you. 2 Timothy 1, 1 through 5 and 2 Timothy 3.15 are the verses I'd like for you to consider today as you move past this moment. Think about them this week. How Paul wrote to Timothy and the things that he said to him and how he mentioned that his mom and his grandmother had such an amazing impact on his life. Timothy, at some point, was spiritually adopted by the Apostle Paul. I'm not sure if Paul led him to saving faith or not, or if someone else did, but Timothy became a valuable asset to the Apostle Paul and the ministry in establishing churches and seeing to that they were cared for. Uh, but he was first, we know, Paul makes it clear, he was first spiritually influenced by his mom and by his grandma. That, uh, that mom and grandma, they had what the Bible, the King James Version says, unfeigned, unfeigned faith. Uh, probably translated genuine faith. Unfeigned faith. Uh, it means... They weren't acting a part. It means, hypocritical means playing a role or acting a part, play acting. Their faith was not hypocritical. It was not superficial. It, it, it wasn't just an act. It was nothing fake, nothing phony. It wasn't counterfeit. It was real. Their faith was real, and that's what they were able to pass on to their son and grandson. They passed on their faith, that genuine faith. Legacy, by definition, is anything handed down. Legacy, by definition, is a gift that will benefit or enrich or make better the lives of those who receive it. And the question is, what is the next generation inheriting from us? What's being passed down from us to them? What's been passed down from them to us. And what is the chief thing you would like to pass on to your children and your grandchildren? And I know you think about that. What is the most important thing that you would like to pass on to your children and your grandchildren? What's the most valuable treasure? And what will we, just what will be passed on to our kids and our grandkids? And for Timothy's mom and grandma, they gave something eternal. They gave something that will never end. They passed on their faith in the Lord their God. So today, I'd make a little challenge to all the moms. I hope you will pass on a love for God's Word. Paul said, from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. How'd that happen? Timothy's mom and his grandmother both loved God's Word and they understood the importance of God's Word and they passed on a love for God's Word, the Holy Scriptures. And they also, as I've said, passed on their faith, their unfeigned or unstoppable faith was passed down. I hope you'll pass on your love for God's Word. I hope you'll pass on your faith. I pray that you will pass on your love for God. Be a mom who loves God's Word. Be a mom of deep faith. And be a mom who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Moms, your lives matter. You are in that significant role of influence and impact, molding, shaping like no one else. I'll tell you, moms are changing the world one child at a time. And that can be for the good or for the worse, but moms really do change the world one life at a time. Well, being a mom, I probably didn't need to tell you, Shelby, but being a mom is extremely stressful. Uh, there was a mother in here a couple years ago, and she sent a message after. She said uh, that she heard, I, maybe she didn't, maybe she wasn't here, maybe she watched the video, and she screamed out when I said something like, uh, 
being a mom was extremely stressful. She had a stressful week, I think, with her children. Well, the stress-free mom does not exist. So you will need God's help to fulfill your responsibilities. And the good thing is God has help for you. Uh, I'm giving you a Mother's Day gift I hope you'll appreciate. I'm actually coming in for a landing today. So these are some of my final statements to you. And you say, I've heard that all before. No, really, I am. I'm stopping. Um, As a gift, I, I want you to be able to spend time with your loved ones and celebrate Mother's Day. Here's the thing, as stressful as it is, God has supernatural strength for you. How many of you want some of it? You can access it. You can access that supernatural strength. It's available to you. I I believe all the things I'm going to mention here rather quickly are available to you through a life of prayer. I, I believe we need more praying moms. Amen? We need moms that will pray and ask God. You see, through prayer we can access the wealth that God has for us that He would like to impart into our lives. So moms, you're going to need strength. Why not ask God to strengthen you? He will. As your day, so shall your strength be. You're going to need wisdom. You're going to run up against some things you have no idea. You're going to need wisdom, wisdom from above, not from beneath. You're going to need wisdom from above. Guess how you access it. If any man ask of God... He will give. He will impart it. It'll be liberal. He he, he liberally imparts to us what we stand in need of. How many believe God has a lot of wisdom for us? How many believe God has all the answers, all the strategies? He knows it all and He can impart it to you. You can access it through prayer. Be a woman of prayer. Be a mom that prays. Don't stop praying. Be, Be a woman known for her prayer life. You can get your strength there. You can get wisdom there. Have you ever just had it? Have you ever just had more than enough? You ever needed God's peace to settle on your heart? God has peace for you. Guess where you find it? I think in the secret place, as you pray, God will impart peace to your life. And it's peace that passes understanding. There's no really adequate description for it. It's peace that God has for you. And how about joy? It's been a hard time raising kids. I can expect my kids are grown. You get to see the grandkids once in a while. But you know the house pretty much. We don't have kids around anymore. But uh, I expect through this pandemic, it's been really hard at home. Seems like we're coming out of it. They wanted to tell us on the news that we may be going back into it. I can't hardly believe that. Certainly not. But but I know it must have been hard for you and... uh, through lockdowns and so forth. But uh, don't forget, God has joy for us and we don't have to wait to heaven to have it. There's joy in the present. And in His presence is the fullness of joy. What are the things that you might stand in need of? I know you need strength. I know you need wisdom. Amen? I know you need peace and I know that you will do better with joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You will function better in the joy of the Lord. God's provision. How is it accessed? How can it be realized in my life presently? I think through prayer. Just ask Him. He will have great measures, great measures of these things for your life. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for every mom here today. Every mom who may be just worn out under extreme stress. Maybe one here whose heart is broken. Lord, we we want to say that we need your help and we believe you want to help us. And I just ask, Lord, right now that from above you will pour out all that these moms might stand in need of. I pray you'll refresh them and renew them as they make their commitment to pass on a legacy of loving God's Word, a legacy of faith, 
Thank you, Lord, for what the next generation is receiving from these godly women. I pray, Lord, you'll raise up more. I pray you'll raise up more. I pray that they will be reproduced in the earth. And I pray that homes and families will be transformed because moms have gotten their hearts right with you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Now you guys can give me a hand for preaching just a short time today.